For today's video, we're going to talk about waves and specifically some different types and properties of waves. Please take notes as you watch this video, stopping, pausing, or rewinding as needed to make sure you get all of the information. Okay, so to begin, a wave is defined as a disturbance that transfers energy from point to point. As you can see, we got three different animations that illustrate different types of waves that we might experience. Okay, even people standing up in a stadium, spreading a wave around all of those seats is an example of transferring energy. Okay, the animation in the middle would be an example of maybe of you sending a pulse down the string. And the animation on the bottom is actually a good animation of how sound travels through the air. One of the important things to notice as you look at any of those animations, notice how it's the energy or the signal that travels from left to right, but individual people or particles are simply just moving up and down. Okay, most waves are traveling through a medium, and a medium is just any material that a wave is going to travel through. So it can be a gas, it can be a liquid, it can be a solid. Not all waves actually require a medium to travel, though. Light from the sun travels through empty space. We'll talk more about light as we get into our next unit, and all of the waves we're going to focus on for the next couple of weeks will be ones that do require either a solid, a liquid, or a gas to send that signal. When we talk about what causes waves, it's the same thing that we talked about when we focused in on the little bobblehead introduction in class. Waves are created when a source of energy causes a medium to vibrate. So it something causes that material, that solid, liquid, or gas, to be set in motion. And that motion transfers to the particle next to it, and on and on and on, until that signal reaches its destination. Waves can go into two different types. The first one that we're going to talk about is a transverse wave. Transverse waves are waves that move at right angles to the direction which they're traveling. Looking at the diagram to the right, the wave itself would be moving to the right, but the individual particles are just simply moving up and down. Okay, so that's how we get that right angle. Okay, transverse waves are probably the waves that you're most familiar with. Okay, all transverse means is a cross. The highest parts are called the crests, and the bottommost part are called the troughs. The types of waves you're probably most familiar with, okay, and they kind of represent a nice little sine curve that you might have seen in your math classes. The second type of wave is called a longitudinal wave or a compressional wave. Okay, the matter is going to vibrate in the same direction as the wave travels. Okay, I've got a picture of a slinky on the slide for a reason. Imagine we stretch that slinky out and we just take the coils and bunch them together and then let them go. That would be an example of a longitudinal wave. On a longitudinal wave, the parts where the coils are all close together is called a compression, and the parts where the coils are all spread out are called a rarefaction. If that's analogous to the crest and trough on a transverse wave, but we use, again, different terminologies for a different type of wave. Regardless of the type of wave, there's four basic properties that we're going to focus on. Amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and speed. Okay, so let's begin with amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum distance the particles of the medium carrying the wave move away from their rest position. So in other words, how far from equilibrium do they travel? If you look at our picture, okay, this right here is our amplitude. But I could also express the amplitude by measuring how deep the trough is. Okay, again, it's how high those particles travel from their equilibrium position. The farther the medium moves as it vibrates, the larger the amplitude of the resulting wave. Okay, it's important to note that amplitude is going to correspond to energy. So the greater the amplitude you have, the greater the amount of energy that you have and are talking about. second property we want to talk about is a wavelength. Wavelength just means the distance between two corresponding parts of a wave. As you can see from the picture, the wavelength is marked from crest to crest. That's one way we can show wavelength. Another place I can measure wavelength, okay, I can be, start here and go to here. Okay, that's another wavelength. I can also measure from the bottom of the trough to the bottom of the neck trough. Basically, it's any part where the wave starts to repeat itself. Okay, that's what we mean by wavelength. It's represented by a symbol lambda, and its units, since it's a length, are still in meters. 
On a longitudinal wave, we can still talk about the wavelength as well. Notice how the wavelength on a longitudinal wave is measured from compression to compression. Okay, so that's the easiest way to, me to measure the wavelength on a longitudinal wave. The amplitude on a longitudinal wave is actually represented okay, by that compression. Okay, so how dense that part of the wave is. Okay, so this would be the amplitude on a longitudinal wave. And the wavelength, again, would measure from compression to the next compression. Frequency is another property of a wave and is defined as the number of complete waves that pass a given point in a certain amount of time. Imagine yourself sitting on the beach watching the waves roll in. How often you see a wave hit the shore would be the frequency of the wave. Frequency is also defined as the number of vibrations per second. It's measured in hertz, HZ. Okay, if you've ever paid attention to the dial on your radio, what you're dialing in is the frequency. Okay, we're going to watch a couple animations to show what we mean by frequency. Okay, this is an example of a transverse wave. Okay, notice how I have the frequency set very low. Okay, it's how often the wave is repeating itself. So if you watch just one of those particles, how often it makes one complete cycle up and down. If I increase the frequency, okay, you can see that those individual particles are moving up and down at a much quicker rate. One thing I want to make sure that you don't do is confuse frequency with speed. Okay, speed is still defined as how long it takes to get from point A to point B. Okay, so watch as I move the frequency down low, the time it takes for that pulse to move from the left to the right is the speed. It's the same regardless of if I had a low frequency or a high frequency. Okay, again, if I count how long it takes to move for that pulse to move left to right, it's the same amount of time either way, but the frequency of each is clearly different. If I look at a longitudinal pulse, again, look at the, at the frequency. It's how often a wave passes a given point. This would represent a low frequency. Here's a high frequency. So how often the wave repeats itself or how often it cycles back and forth. Okay. So there's your example of what we mean when we talk about frequency. Again, frequency should not be confused with speed. Speed is still defined as how quickly something is able to travel from point A to point B. On a wave, it's not really practical to measure the distance and the time, but instead we look at the wavelength and the frequency to determine speed. The speed, wavelength, and frequency are all related to each other by a mathematical formula known as the wave equation. Okay. Speed is equal to wavelength times frequency, or in variables below, V stands for velocity or speed, lambda is your wavelength, F stands for frequency. We still get a unit of meters per second, even though we're using different variables other than distance and time. Okay, I hope you have a basic understanding of the two different types of waves, as well as the four different properties associated with waves. See you in class.